Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have John Takare, who is the Vice President of Products for SonicWall. So welcome to the jam, John. Hello, can you hear me? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Um, so we're going to be talking a lot about Secure Access Service Edge today, or SASE. Um, so could you tell me, firstly, what does SASE mean for SonicWall? What does it, um, what does it mean in the context of your company? Sure, sure, Nick. So SASE, as you are already aware, is an umbrella architecture framework type of uh, concept which Gartner came out with. And it's a framework for security that is delivered at the source, primarily through the cloud versus the traditional data center model where you have to hairpin all the traffic back to the data center for inspecting it. And we constantly keep talking to our partners and customers to understand what they see happening in their world, what their end customers prefer with respect to deployment choices. And we had seen this shift uh, even before the term SASE was coined, where we started our partners and customers asking for more and more things to be serviced from the cloud. Uh, what then, what ended up happening is we started moving more and more security services to the cloud because of that. And when SASE came out, which was about a couple of years ago, it sort of fit into the scheme of things we were going uh, with. So although the term SASE has been coined in last couple of years and has gained prominence, SonicWall has been trying to move more and more security services to the cloud and serve customers. Uh, so that's where, uh, we see intersection of SASE and SonicWall. Right, yeah. And just to, to build on that question, where is SonicWall in its own SASE journey? Oh, as far as the product is concerned, uh, we launched SonicWall Cloud Edge late last year. Uh, it's entirely cloud delivered. And when we launched it, Cloud Edge started providing zero trust network access capabilities for both client and clientless environments. And recently we also added the stateful firewalling capability to it. And that allows for TCP IP level of uh, network traffic control as well as access. And we plan to continue evolving our portfolio and services on the SASE front so that our partners and customers can not only do network traffic control, but also do deep packet inspection and few other things along with it. Uh, so we plan to launch some of these services early next year. And as we launch them, our partners and customers can take advantage of uh, more and more security inspections delivered from the cloud. Right, yeah. Um, so in the last 18 months, a zero trust security model has been widely adopted um, a lot because of um, the shift to remote work is, is a big reason. So could you tell me how does it relate to, how does zero trust relate to SASE? What's the intersection between SASE and zero trust? Yeah, interesting question by the way. So I feel that there's a clear distinction between the two. Uh, zero trust, is in existence for some time already. And it's more about access control. And SASE on the other hand is more recent introduction and is about delivering security near the source where the users are, where they are accessing the devices or the network from those devices. And if you look at what Zero Trust is, it's basically a model. What it says is, no implicit trust, which traditional VPN solutions typically assume and give you flat access to a network. What zero trust says is every access needs to be explicitly granted. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are coming from, which device you are on, every access request you make to application or to a server needs to be granted. 
and it can be implemented in multiple ways uh, there are vendors who and even us we provide zero trust using on prem cloud or hybrid architectures on the other hand sasi is more of a cloud delivered architecture that encapsulates encapsulates the principles of zero trust for access but it is more than what i would say zero trust network access it expects vendors to provide functionality for deep packet inspection and securing the customer both from the data as well as intellectual property point of view so that there is no data leakage so yes there is an intersection but as concepts they are different and i think both of them have some commonality sasi does use zero trust for zpna but it's more than that right yeah um and keeping on this zero trust um topic so there's a lot of um some it companies uh believe that they would have to completely rebuild their security system to implement zero trust. What do you think about that? Do you think that's true um, and why? Yeah, so as I said earlier, zero trust is a model and in today's work, uh, today's environment where work from anywhere is what is we are doing, right? I'm working from home, I don't know about you, but most people are working from home, specifically in IT and other industries. Uh, something like zero trust is a must have to keep us safe and i say that because we don't know we don't want to give full access to the network to somebody who may not be in a secure environment and even if we do we want to make sure that they have right access privileges to right network resources or application resources and if you notice recently a lot of government organizations including the us government uh, released a draft for zero trust guidance so they are taking it very seriously i just feel it's the right thing to do right thing to implement for organizations um, sonic wall has already started adopting the tenets of zero trust in our solutions and if you look at what we do um, as a part of our boundless cyber security solution uh, we not only have sonic wall cloud edge where we provide zero trust network access solution which is delivered from the cloud but our advanced vpn solutions such as sma secure mobile access also delivers zero trust for both client and client based client list access so i think for sonic wall is a natural progression to have a solution in zero trust and we think that with the solutions we have we have covered zero trust both from on prem virtual environment to the cloud environment so coming back to the question of do companies need to rebuild uh, their security systems i think it depends the answer is it depends on what the companies already have in place uh, so if you are an advanced vpn solution if you have that and uh, you may be able to achieve zero trust by adding a new components without having to replace the whole thing and by the way many large enterprises fall into this category and i don't see them ripping off everything they have but at the same time if you are an, a small company or if you have old traditional vpn solution that grants broad access then it may be a, a right time for you to move to a completely cloud delivered ztna solution because it's not a huge leap for you so that's what i would say that you don't need to rip and replace everything you could take advantage of what you have and move to a zero trust model perfect cool well um that's it for today's interview thank you so much for joining me today jayant it was nice talking to you thank you